here we go then. So here we've got the uh, the Ude Zephyrus. UD or Ude. Who knows? I keep changing the name. It says UD up there and it says Ude down there. I suppose Ude is phonetically correct. Ah, whatever. Anyway, so let's have a quick look at the packaging. It comes in this sort of Apple-like presentation package. You see we've got the actual tank itself. We've got some bits and bobs there. And on the back we have some ratings and some diagrams. So we can see there illustrates the uh, rebuildable head section, the drip tip, the tank, the OCC head and the base and how to put it all together and how to fit it. This is something stuck to my finger. This is going to require using a needle nose bottle or a syringe, uh, but more on that later. So it gives us some dimensions on height. It also gives us some statistics on airflow as well. So it's 12 by 2 millimeter by 2 intake holes or a 8.65 millimeter outside outside diameter airflow delivery. Uh, does it give us the uh, capacity of liquid? Oh yeah, five milliliters. There it is, right there. There we go. Uh, it's Cogendo 100% Japanese organic cotton dual coils, uh, rebuildable head specs there. So it's uh, four three millimeter diameter intake holes, uh, peak insulator, the base is made out of stainless steel, not copper with silver plated, with ceramic seat. Hmm. There we go, so unification of design. I presume that's what UD means, now we know. Okay, enough of that, let's have a look, see. Now, as you might be able to tell with the remnants of juice in it, I've been vaping it already. So. Uh, Yours comes like this, someone's already had it. So what do we get here then? We've got the, uh, this is the rebuildable head. There we go there. Now I've not actually used this yet, so. Uh, no, I'm not entirely sure this comes off. I would imagine it would. Yeah, it does, there we go. It's a bit tight, but uh, threading on this isn't it particularly smooth. Uh, does it need to be? Well, yes it does, but there we go. That's what we got. So what we got there then, we got uh, four post holes and we got four almighty great air holes as well. I mean this is going to really chuck it, isn't it? So that's quite exciting, I will be having a play with that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So let's put that to one side. Okay, um, I need something to facilitate to getting this out with. This screwdriver will do. So what we've got there, we've got, uh, should we call this a heat sink? We call this a heat sink, shall we? There we go, so that fits between the, yeah, that fits between the tank and the drip tip. So there we go. And then we've got some replacement, I, I would say O-rings, but they're kind of beefy for O-rings. But we've got two of each here. We've got uh, a red and uh, a blue one, which uh, is quite nice. It comes with these, these white ones pre-installed. Um, so that's quite nice, you want to change the look of it and make it fit your uh, your mod and then we've got a spare glass tank. So yeah, that'll do for all that. Let's pop this all in here and I'll put it out of the way. Right then. So let's take a look at the device, shall we? So here is the stock drip tip. Now this is interesting. It's quite a stubby little fella. Big old air holes. Um, I don't know if I can get enough light down there to actually show you guys. No, I can't really, can I? No. Um, yeah, I mean that that is not cut off in any way. That that diameter goes right down there, as you can see, straight into this chimney section. That is a big diameter. So that is about as wide open as you can get on a 510 connector. And you also see in here as well the actual inside of it is rifled which is different. I've never encountered that before. I can't really imagine it adds anything. But hey, there we go. And um, yeah, so you've got this, uh, this heat sink, shall we call it, that pops there. And then you pop the drip tip on top of there, like so. So that's that, basically. Now, to fill this, oh, actually, let's just cover the aesthetics a bit, shall we? It says Zephyrus here on the top. Uh, We've got these almighty great air holes, and as you can see, you can see straight through those. I mean, they are massive. 
Uh, on the bottom we've got uh, UD and we've got a serial number. What have I got? I've got uh, juice all over it. I've got 2015. Maybe that's not a serial number then. Maybe it's just the manufacturing date because it is 2015. Who knows? Um, yeah, so this spins quite freely. There's no, uh, there's no locking off or anything. And it does just pop off. But uh, that's not really going to be an issue when it's screwed down or something, is it? Because that's it's quite flush. It is a non-adjustable 510 pin. So that is it. There's not really any giving that either. So you're kind of relying on your mod to have an adjustable 510 pin setting. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so inside here we can see the uh, UD logo on here and it says 0 0.3 ohms and it's recommending a range of 20 to 50 watts. Now, I'm going to remove this. Now, this is easier said than done because this part just screws off or comes off. Okay, so let's and this isn't the easiest thing, so I'm going to take it out of camera shot for a minute, I'm afraid, because it's not really designed to be removed that easily, even though you kind of have to. So, uh, yeah, do excuse me. There we go. So, you'll notice I removed the base, and then this has stayed put. This is actually coil head, so I need to unscrew that. Now you don't get a spare coil with this, but you do get the uh, the rebuildable section instead, which, as we've seen, is not pre-coiled. Um, which might be a a minus point for some people. Maybe someone picks this up and isn't really familiar with building a coil, so wants an example of how it's done. So here is I'll just get the excess juice off here. Here is the OCC coil unit. Um, in all its finery. Uh, as you can see there, it is two coils, and there's cotton there and there's ceramic in there, so I've not actually attempted to rebuild this yet, given it's the only one I've got. But I will give it a go at some point. Um, might be tricky with that ceramic head in there, but we'll give it a shot sometime or the other. There's an insulator there, and there's an almighty great air intake. I mean, look at that. That's where all your air is going to flow in here. I mean, there's basically nothing in the way of it. And uh, for your juice to get in, there's two very, very, very big, uh, big holes there for the for the juice to get to the uh, the cotton. So uh, that's all pretty good. So let's just reassemble this. Uh, actually, where's the uh, where's the rebuildable section? Let's just let's just pop this on so what it looks like. So I've not actually done it yet. So uh, I'll leave the uh, the chimney section off. So yeah, again the threading isn't brilliant, but it works. Yeah, so that was screwing like so, as one would expect. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bother to rebuild this on camera. Uh, we've all seen this type of atomizer rebuilt before you know it's your standard dual coil uh, design obviously you're going to put each coil above both of these air holes um, now presumably you pop the cotton down these holes at the side here and jobs are good one. And that's pretty much all there is to it so what I'm going to do I'll um, remember why I just put the cotton there we go the cotton coil there it is So that's going there. What I want to do is show you how to fill this. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's a bit messy this because I'm a bit covered in juice. So I'm just going to tighten this up. Not easy to do on camera, I'm afraid. So that's tightened up there. Let's put the uh, the airflow control back on. Now to fill this, then what you do is you unscrew this part at the top. Okay, and then you've got this uh, silicon plug, which you must remove. And then you get your juice. Now, this is the problem you've got here. You can't use one of those pipette drippers. It's just simply not going to work very well, is it? Uh, let's try and adjust this lighting a bit. So you're going to need to use uh, a needle bottle or a syringe. 
So I'm just uh, removing the cap from the bottle of juice. Uh, what I do like is the fact that they put two holes side by side. So once you've got your bottle in there, like so, you've got somewhere for the, uh, the air to come out. But on the plus side, what this means is, I mean, you could fill it from the bottom, but you're not going to get much liquid in there. I'm not going to put massive amount in there right now anyway, because I'm going to be taking it apart later. Uh, I mean, you just pop your... Uh, covering bits of something. I don't know what that is. Right, so you just screw that on. So you could fill it by t un uh, unscrewing the bottom and filling it like, like you would a sub tank or whatever, but you're not going to get much liquid in there. You'll pretty much get liquid from here to there as opposed to from there right to the top. So you can fill it to capacity. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the uh, the curse up section. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do two sections now of the vape time part where I will vape it with this coil in. And then I'm going to build a, uh, a coil on the uh, rebuildable section. And we'll see how that goes as well. And what I'll do, I'll use the same juice in both, both sections. okay? And I'll try and keep them roughly the same homage. So, uh, see you after the jump cut. So, welcome back. And what we've got here then, we've got the, uh, the Ude Zephyrus sitting on top of my SX Mini M class. And it's currently reading 0 0.33 ohms. And I've currently got it at, well, we'll call it 50 watts. I mean, there's no sense in splitting hairs over 0.1 watt, is there? Okay. Got it set to the standard profile. And uh, this juice, I'm not entirely sure what the ratio of this is. I think it might be 50-50. It might be slightly higher in VG. I'm not sure. I'm going to say 50-50. I mean, it's quite gloopy. Uh, gloopy, quite quite thin, li liquidy. Um, but it is also 4 milligram. Now, those of you that saw last week's show, or the week before, depending when this goes out, would have seen me get a bit giddy just by chuffing on this thing. Now, I've got the air holes wide open. Okay? So you can see straight through. You can see, you can see me through it. Okay? Let's have a side view cloud shot. That's pretty respectable. And it's not lacking on flavour either. It's pretty good. So, um, right, I've yet to try the rebuildable head. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to rebuild, or I'm going to build it. And then I'm going to put it in. I'm going to keep the same juice in there because it's 10 to 2 in the morning. Sunday morning, and I really can't be bothered to uh, to go and rinse and clean this all out. So uh, you know, I can't sleep. So I'm sitting here recording VT as we do. We're that dedicated. Anyway, I digress. I shall see you after the jump cut. And welcome back. Right, <clears throat> I did say I was going to keep them roughly the same sort of homage, didn't I? I, I lied. I actually put nickel coil in this, or two of them. And it's come out at uh, 0 0.06 ohms. I tell you what, it was the devil's own job doing it, because the uh, the way the nature of how you tighten the uh, the, the post down, it traps the wire. And uh, yeah, I snipped a couple of wires on the wrong side of the post, so I had to redo the coils. The initial coil I did with a three millimeter former turned out to be too big to fit in the deck. Um, because the actual chimney is quite narrow, so I actually used uh, my old standard uh, green syringe, which allowed me to uh, to put some coils on. But to give you some idea of time now, it's now 25 to 3 in the morning. <laughs> I've been at it for over an hour, just, just finagling it. But let's see how it performs, shall we? Uh, again, it is at, well, 50 joules now. So, basically the same as wattage, isn't it? Ish. If you saw my review on the SX Mini, go refer back to that if you haven't seen it. But uh, it's a standalone on the YouTube channel. Anyway. That'll do, won't it? And a side on. It produces very, very much. Tell you what, if you spend the time on the rebuildable section on this, you've got a you've got a cracking atty on your hand, you really have. Very good. Flavour's superb. 
it builds very similar to the Goblin in that you don't put much cotton in the channels, only a little bit. Uh, just enough, not too much, but um, I don't know if you can see really on the close ups here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, over there. Yeah, it's um, tricky to see, but you can see the, the, the holes there, the cotton actually comes through. That's superb, and I'll say I'll get no dry hits, but I won't because I'm on temperature control mode. Very, very nice. Same juice as before. Now, I've not tested this with a high VG liquid yet. I'm assuming this is a 50-50 mix because you can see it just runs around in the bottle quite quite good. It's the Vapor Shark uh, Berry Crunch, actually, quite nice. But, um, yeah, good flavour. The draw on it is nice and, nice and light on this. I mean, let's, let's tighten the draw down. Let's... Let's put the draw to that much. And I can feel that tight already. And bubbles are appearing quite happily. Even on that, it's producing. It really is. Let's try for a full on lung. Yeah. That's good. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's wrap this up. So. Where can you get this? Well, a number of vendors are selling it online. So just do a search for Ude uh, Zephyrus UK. You'll find plenty of uh, places selling it. And I picked it up for uh, $27.99, plus the shipping. So it's not an expensive Atty. It's on, it's on the same sort of level as the sub-tanks. And uh, it, produces, it produces more vapour than a sub-tank, easily. Would I go for this the sub-tank? Yeah, maybe. The downside is the rebuildable section is a lot fiddlier to rebuild. Probably easier with uh, standard canfold, to be honest with you. But um, it, it, it is fiddlier than the sub-tank rebuildable section, so that's my only real downside of it. Um, the filling section... Yeah, if you've got, a drip, yeah, if you've got one of these, these, type of, these type of bottles, you know, with the... Uh, with the with the glass drippy filly thingy you're going to need to invest in syringes okay and depending on the thickness of your juice the thickness of your syringe so go for the green ones if i were you they will fit in the holes fill holes quite easily but um yeah that, that method as you can see i filled it right up pretty much and that method actually allows you to get a lot more juice in the tank than say an atlantis or uh, you know some of the others so um yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Anyway, so um, the Zephyrus from Ude. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. And 28 quid, you can't really complain. It's a good atty. Anyway, until next time, one more vape. Ta-da.